We'll start with a word of prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven, maker of earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, to you belongs all praise, glory, and honor. Help us now to look into your wonderful book, O Lord, and to understand the things therein. We, give, uh, we ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in right living or righteousness. We're staying with the same thesis found in 1 Peter 2.11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. And that's uh, what we're sticking with. We're strangers and we're pilgrims. We're on our way to another place. Um, and we're told to abstain from things that war against the soul. And especially that what is forbidden. And we looked at that passage, that phrase that's only found in 14 times is found in the book of Numbers, able to go forth to war. So God says after a period of time, I believe that's what he's saying, he expects us to go to war, and that's to war the flesh uh, or the things of the world. Because they're going to confront, as we go through the book of Numbers, they're going to confront enemies. And so God is saying it's, you know, it's time to do that. And so we covered all the sons of, uh, of, of Leah pretty much except for Zebulun. Zebulun is where we stopped. Uh, Zebulun uh, was the, the, um, the sixth son that she had, but it was the tenth in the order. And, uh, and the, only way, the only reason we looked, I mentioned the order was because dad gave us the, the idea that there were four women and it just so happens that the fallen mother's day. How, how powerful influence these women had. And, and in the Bible, folks, it, it, you notice that the Lord mentions uh, these men, uh, great men, and he always mentions the mother. And he also mentions also, if you happen to have a, a bad man, uh, and you mention uh, or how his wife, the, the name of the wife or the name of the mother, like Italia, and she was a wicked person. She, she killed the babies, you know, that's the only way her name comes up. Um, and so that woman, uh, so here you have of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon, and there you have the tribe, name, house, and the court of, as the, I, I remember I pointed this out, I'm mentioning it again, the court, I connected the word to courting, and when you go according, that's, you're, you're seeking to impress a woman or a mate. And so, and it's up to her. If she finds it suitable, then she'll say yes. If not, she'll just tell you to move along. And so here you have, uh, and then when she does, she has a great influence, because look what she, she's the one that uh, gave him that name to be, or the house, I'm saying the house is the court, to be strong and God is Father. That's what Iliad um, stands for. And then now we get move on to the other women, the other three women, the sons of Rachel. The children of Joseph of Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Imihud. So there you have, these are the sons of Joseph. Joseph is now left off, and his two sons are gonna take his place. And one of them is Ephraim, okay? Ephraim, uh, and, and so that tells you what that name means, people of praise, and his name, that's the house, people of praise, and his name is God will hear. And then the second son is Manasseh. Manasseh also, that's why I put asterisks on both those, um, uh, because they take, the, both of those tribes take the place of Joseph. Um, and that name stands for the, ro the rock has redeemed, that's God, and God is rewarded, that's his name. And then we move on to uh, Benjamin. All these three people are related, all these three people, because Benjamin and Joseph were brothers. So these two guys, Ephraim and Manasseh, are his nephews. And this is why it's so key. 
You need to know this because when the kingdom splits, you would think that Benjamin would be closer to Manasseh and Ephraim because they're his nephews. But he doesn't do that. He cuts off from them and chooses Judah. And that's what happens when we choose the Spirit of God, we, we, we cut off the kin, which is our flesh. And so that's what he does. So um, the Gideoni stands for um, um, a cutting down to fell a tree, the, father, the father's judge. And that means that tells you, these guys, okay, let's move on. We're getting now into the maids. The maid of Rachel was Bilha. And she's the one that had Dan, and Hesir is the son of a, a Mishit Shaddai, and his name stands for uh, my kinsman is the almighty brother of help. And then it switches, you would think, well, where's the other son of Bilha? It switches, there's something going on here, back and forth. It switches now to Silpa, and Silpa, um, Pagiel, the son of Okran, and his name stands um, to disturb, to trouble God's intervention. And now we switch back to Bilha, um, and, or it's Leah. And so, see, it switches back and forth. Uh, the sons of Leah, uh, Gad, Eliaf, Seth, uh, son of Duel, and his name, um, he was the seventh, and his name stands knowledge of God. God is gatherer. And then we finish off with Bilhah, the, the maid of Rachel. And Ahira, the son of Enon. And his name stands for having eyes, brother of evil. Now, this is when I've gotten into the habit, folks. I look at every name because God is telling you something. The names in the Bible, they're all there for a reason. Um, and so here you have the Here's, the Bible says, these were the renown of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. These 12 men we just went through, these were, it says they were heads. And look at their names. God is rock. God is a piece of a God. And uh, to his, God has given, God is father, God will hear, God has rewarded, the father is judge, brother of help, God's intervention, God is gatherer, brother of evil. So this is their names, and so these were, uh, these were the heads of the tribes. They were captains. So these, are, these guys, when you meet with these guys, they're going to remind you by their name who God is. You know, it's, got, it's nice to, that's why I constantly tell people, you need to be in church, because you, you rub shoulders with people of like faith, you know, and, and it keeps you straight. And, and we need to be among God's people for this reason. So here you have all these people, and they had captains with these names, because there was no Bible, folks. How are you going to be kept straight? Every time you met one of these guys, it would convict you. I mean, because that's who they are. Heads of thousands. But notice, I put a note here. There's another census taken uh, at chapter 26. We're in chapter two, we're in chapter one. And none of them are there. After chapter 10, you won't find none of these guys. What happened? Remember how they all fell in the wilderness? That was, this is kind of spooky. I said, Lord, what happened to these guys? They were great captains. They're not there at the end. The only two we know of was Joshua and Caleb. So what does that tell us, folks? You know, we have the Bible, and they had these men to remind them of the law. Because this is what I'm asking. Am I continually seeking his guidance? Because these guys, they were guided. The, Israel was guided by these men. That was, they took the place of the word of God. But you won't find them again. They, that, this is a testimony, I believe, because we're in the wilderness. And people, folks, you meet people all the time, they fall by the wayside. You can, you go for so long, and then you become a statistic. Yeah. 
you cease to be. And that's, folks, the fact that you're here, it's, it's the worthy to, uh, to be thank worthy, you know, because God is, we listen to God. What little we do, we listen and he keeps us going. I just wanted to. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So we see that. They, they, just, they just celebrated the three feasts, uh, Passover, um, unleavened, and first fruits. They just celebrated that. It says on the second month. Okay, this is because they were only going to be there for two years. And now they're going to move on, move on, pack up and load up the, uh, 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 the truck and, and we're going to head out. You know, we're going on this hike and it's only going to be 11 days. You know, it's only going to be 11 days. And it came to pass on the 20th day. Notice how I jumped over. I jumped over to chapter 10. 11 and it came to pass on the 20th day whoa so what i'm about to show you i'm just going to give you a preview of what's going to be happening in those 20 days before they head out because this is what's going to happen look at this that the cloud was taken out from off the tabernacle of the testimony so for 20 days they're preparing they're packing lunch, they're making sure all the, uh, uh, the sleeping bags and the cameras and the, uh, the cots and everything is ready to go because they're about to take off. They're going to be taken off on this. Uh. So God is, look at, look at this, we're told this in Exodus 13, 21. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. So God has got provisions. He's got provisions for this hike, for this travel. And so, and we're going to see later on all the enemies that are out there. You know, we're going to see some of the enemies. And so it says here, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years and not put by, the, by their poles. So here... It, they're they're coming forth and they're by their names because they're affecting the their tribe by their names so i believe they're representatives of who you can be you can have this um from the tribe and i believe at this time they're going to be taking on this is, um their standards they, they they all have their own standards and i there's an example of judah that's what judah would look like with a lion um, that word name is renowned or known by the names what you're known by and um, conspicuous standing out as to be clearly visible so you're carrying that standard that's your standard your name you know this tells us something about who you are you know are you a faithful person I mean somebody you just meet you don't know them but once people get to know you you know, it takes, because I worked with children for over 40 years, and I read the books that says, it takes something like 15 years for parents to trust you. You know, it takes that long for parents to trust you with their children. But you can mess it up within 15 minutes or less, and you're done. Now it's going to take another 15, 20 years for you to be trusted again. Um, that's, that's the way it is. I mean, once you're known, so, and, and as the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. They're being numbered. They're being prepared for the war, um, the battle that's coming. In the wilderness of Sinai. That, again, wilderness of Sinai is found 11 times, and, not, and 9 of those 11 times are found in the book of Numbers. That little phrase, wilderness of Sinai. And I believe the wilderness of Sinai, well, this is what it stands for, Desert Mountain of Arabia. And what that is, folks, if you spend time out there, you're spending time in self-righteousness. And that's no good. That's wilderness, too. You know, that's the law. The, the mountain of Arabia, that's the law. And if you can, if, 
and I just met with a man, and he's big on the Word of God. He knows the Word of God, but he, he's relying on works. And I told him, I said, it's been taken care of, you know? It's been taken care of. But uh, he's, he's, he wants to stay there, I says. Go for it. Spend your time in the wilderness. Look what it says here. It says here in Deuteronomy 1, 2, that's the next book we'll look at after we come back from John. There are 11 days journey from Horab by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. So there you have it, folks. They need to get from Sinai all the way to Kadesh Barnea. That's 150 miles, and they're going to be walking. So if you walk 20 miles, a day, I think a, a crowd could walk about 20 miles a day. I mean, it's easy. Um, and, but the Lord says he gave them 11 days to get over there. Um, Horeb means desolate. That's the mountain of, that's Sinai. Sinai is meant, you'll run across that in the Bible. It's named that. It's, it can be Mount, it can be Sinai, Horeb, or Hagar. You know, Hagar is law. And Sinai is what he gave the law. And, and it's desolate, it's desolation. Um, and then Seir. Seir is another name for Edom or for Esau. And remember how the Bible tells you that Esau was a hairy man? It's an uncapped man. I just got a haircut. I look kind of neat, you know? It's always nice when you have your, your hair, you know, his hairs are not sticking all over the place. You look orderly, you know? And, but shaggy as a he goat, you know? And that gives you a, a, a connotation towards uh, uh, Pan, the Pan God, the, the nature, natural. And, and we know that Esau was the natural man. So it tells you something uh, by way of seer. And then it tells you unto Kadesh Barnea. Look at this. Kadesh means sanctuary. Bar means field. And um, that nua to waver. So you, you put it all together. It's, it's like a place where you can either go into the sanctuary or you can wander or waver, spend time. It's, that's what Kadesh was. It was a turning point. And God told them, go into the land. We're going to find out. He told them there at Kadesh Barna, go into a land. And at that point, they sent 12 spies. Remember that? And then the spies came back and they said, there's giants in the land. And they refused to go. They refused to go, folks. But I want to point out there's 11, because I thought, why 11 days? You know, why 11? Because uh, everything is there for a reason. That's the way I study the Bible. Everything is there for a reason. So keep that in mind, because we're going to come back to that. So I want to show you what happens within those 20 days before they take off. Um, so you're going to find out that they number the people. Uh, they also appoint the Levites over the tabernacle. Um, they, the pitching order of the tribes by standard, how they're going to set up their tents um, around the tabernacle. Order of the setting forth, who's going to go first, second, third, and fourth, and so on. It's all there. Um, the tribe of Levi is given to Aaron and his sons. Um, Levi's sons are numbered and assigned the tabernacle task, what each one is supposed to be doing. Uh, the unclean are put out of the camp because God says, I'm going to be among you and I don't want any lepers near me. Put them out of the camp. Isn't it amazing? If you had any kind of disease or sickness, God says, do not come near the tabernacle because God is holy. And, and also, trespass, confessing, and, and recompense. He, all these things, folks, this shows you God is the God, our God is the God of order. Oh yeah, He's a God of order, and and also um, the law of jealousies. Remember that? That's a weird thing. I mean, getting dirt and putting it in the water and then drinking that thing. We're gonna get to that. Um, vow of the Nazarite is there. 
um, the blessing of Israel. Everybody knows that, chapter 6, the blessing. And um, the offering of the six wagons and 12 oxen. Um, the 12 days of dedicating of the altar is there. And the lighting, the candlestick, special thing. And the dedication of the Levites, uh, keeping the Passover the first month, second year. And then the making of the two silver trumpets. Well, that's the last thing that comes into being. And once you do that, the cloud moves. Once they do all these things, it takes 20 days, and then the cloud moves. Once the cloud starts moving, it means it's time to follow. It's time to follow God. And folks, this is kind of spooky, because look, chapter 11. And when I looked up chapter 11, I thought, wait a minute, that's bankruptcy. Isn't it odd? The chapter 11, because the next chapter, chapter 11, is messed up. Chapter 11 is when they, and bankrupt means completely lacking in a particular quality or value. When you, when you um, come up with that code for your business, you don't, you, you don't have the money. You don't have the money to pay, and so you can reorganize, as it were. But here, in this case, this shows us how needy we are. We are needy, folks, because you can see how the people, this is what happens to them. Rebellion and willful disobedience. That's chapter 11. And it just comes out. The people, they say, no, we're not going in. And they're saying, What's, what is with the food? The food is so bad. I mean, they're complaining about everything. And we're going to see how God says, these people are rebellious. And he's telling us. And that's who we are. That's who we are. And so, so the question is, am I being obedient to his leading? Because this is he's going to lead them. And they are a very rebellious people. And that's what Numbers teaches. So it's a wonderful book. I mean, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful book. Because it shows us our ways. And so then, before, so we get into this thing, the numbering, right? The numbering before they take off. And the children of of Reuben, Israel's eldest son by their generations after their fathers, after their families. So I just, show, I just gave you a preview of what we're going to be looking at in the next 10 chapters. But before we do that, we've got to deal with the numbering. And this thing, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward. God says this, all that are, were able to go forth to war. This is repeated 12 times. So I thought I would only give it to you one time because each tribe, every time he talks about a tribe, he says he repeats it. So I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to put it out in a, one time and let you know that it's going to be said 12 times because we want to go through the numbers really quick. This section here is repeated 12 times. Okay, All that were able to to go forth to war. And those that were number of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were 40 and 6,500. Tells you. Of the tribe of Simeon, those that were number of the tribe of Simeon were 50 and 9,300. Those who were number of them of the tribe of Gad were 40 and 5,650. And I put an asterisk on there because this, Levi is not there. So it's interesting that Silpa's firstborn replaces Levi. And that's gotta be, there's got to be a super reason for that, folks. But we're, not, we're just going to pass by. Like, they didn't even notice it. We'll come back another time. Gat, 45,650. And then those that were number of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were three score and 14,600. Those that were number of them of the tribe of Issachar were 50 and 4,400. Those that were number of them of the tribe of Zebulun were 50 and 7,400. Of the children of Joseph, it tells you that because Joseph is now going to be on there. His sons are. Those that were number of them of the tribe of Ephraim was 40,500. 
those that were numbered of them of the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. Those that were numbered of the tribe of Benjamin were 30 and 5,400. Those that were numbered of the tribe of Dan were three, thousand, three score and 2,700. Those that were numbered of Asher were 40 and 1,500. Those that were numbered of the tribe of Naphtali were 50 and 3,400. So see, we just went through the whole numbering. I mean, we covered it. It's in the Bible, so I had to cover it. You know, I could have just kept them giving you the total. These are they, those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being 12 men, which was, each one was with the house of his fathers. So they held, that's a lot of people to number, to be numbering. So the 12 princes, they took on the job, you know, they were uh, uh, helping out Moses and Aaron. So, so were all those that were number of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward, able to go forth to war. So being, there be a number prepared for war. But again, I believe all these guys, starting with Eliezer and ending with Ahira, these are all representatives. Of, and I'm sure we, we stopped and studied uh, what their names, how you can go into this travel, and but this is the law, folks. The law will not keep you. The law won't help you. And this is why none of these men, I believe, are found in the, in the second census. If you, if you search the names, which I did, none of them go, be, their name is not mentioned anymore beyond chapter 10. Isn't that odd? And I thought, but these were good men. They were captains. Even all that were number were 600,503,550. This is the total. 600,350 people or men that were able to go forth to war. These are the men, okay? Able to, uh, that are soldiers, war, um, ready to go to war. So I was just thinking, okay, I'm just saying 500, let's say half of these men were married. But I think there were more because they married young. Uh, but I'm just gonna say, let's say 300,000 were married. So that means there were 300 wives, 300,000 wives. And let's say each one of them had only two kids and they believed in big families. You know, they were to be fruitful and multiply. So let's just say they were 600,000 600, children. If you add them all together, folks, you have at least 1.5 million people, at least. And I'm thinking it could easily be 2.5 billion million people that are traveling through the desert. That's a huge crowd, okay? And uh, again, the numbers are gonna change somewhat at the end when they take another census. A lot of these people are not gonna be, and of course, all the men are not gonna be there. All these men will die in the wilderness. And Hebrews tells us, as in the day of provocation, they will not enter into my rest. Wow. God speaks about this in Hebrews. So, but the Levites after the tribe of their fathers were not numbered among them for the Lord had spoken unto Moses saying, so he said, the Levites are not gonna be numbered. Those, they, they have another job to do. So he says, uh, only thou shall not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony. This is amazing because those people that are assigned to take care of, this is the presence of God, folks. The tabernacle among his people, he says, I'm gonna go with you but God is, our God is a holy God. And I think a lot of times we treat him, when I was doing the study, I says, I, I'm guilty of this. You know, sometimes I make light of, of my, uh, who I am and who I represent. But this shows us that God says, look what it says here. They appointed over the, over the tabernacle of the testimony. The testimony is his presence. He's gonna be with them. 
He's going to be there. That's a portable uh, presence that's going to be with him. He's going to be, and the, wherever the cloud would stop, that's where they would set up. And the, the Levites, they're going to be over. They're going to be over everything that consists of the tabernacle, over all the vessels that are up and over all the things that belong to it. And God doesn't want anybody else to touch it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it and shall encamp around about the tabernacle. The Levites are supposed to be taking care of this thing. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. They were the only ones. We're going to be seeing this. How meticulous God is about this thing. Who is to touch what and carry what and all this stuff. It just tells us, because there's people, even Christians, uh, Brother Bez has been appointed by God, folks. That's all there is to it. He, he, if we don't like it, well, there's the doors, you know. But you should really keep your mouth shut concerning him. Because it's a scary thing to, to mess with man, the man of God, you know. They're not perfect, but they are assigned. They are given a position. And you start messing with that, and this shows you that. Um, when, they, when the journey starts, and they're about to start it, it says this is what's going to have to be taken care of. The Levites shall take, take it down, and they shall set it up. They're the ones going to be in charge. And it says, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Wow. I says, who was in charge over this? I says, I think the Levites. They says, that's our job. We'll kill you. If you come and you start messing around with the tabernacle, that's how serious it was, folks. It was right in the center of them. And God says, nobody can just come near it, just willy-nilly. You can't do that. Um, and the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by their own camp, and every man by his own standard throughout their host. There's going to be a place for them, and we're going to go through that, where they're supposed to be camping. Everybody's assigned, it's got an assigned spot, which tells you again, we the people of God, everybody, God has gifted everybody in here. You know, we are all gifted to serve in some capacity because God, that's the way he set it up. And by his own standard, by the thing that God has given you, by what you're known, your name, okay? And, but the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of the testimony. They were the ones right next to the, I mean, the people encamped around on the north, the west, and the south, and Moses and Aaron on the front. And, and, and then after that, the Judah, the camp of Judah. But it says here, the Levites shall pitch around about the tabernacle, right next door to the tabernacle. And they're really there for this purpose, that no wrath come upon the children, of the congregation of the children of Israel. And they're really there for, I remember when I was on the carrier, every once in a while, nuclear warheads were moved. And when they were moved, uh, the elevators would come up and they're moving stuff around. And you know, those, those puppies are mean. They're dangerous. And so the Marines would come out and they all, trapped with machine guns, you know. They don't want anybody breaking the chains that, where the warheads are going to be going. They were instructed to shoot anybody that comes, that tries to cross that line. So you know none of us did. I mean, we walk around those chains like, okay. But that's the Levites. The Levites were instructed for our own protection, for the protection. And folks, Look at this. I saw this in the Temple Mount in, night, in 2016. This caused me to look. I says, this is the Temple Mount. This is the holy place in Israel. This thing here, that blue building back there, that's the Dome of the Rock. But the Palestinians or the, or the Muslims, they make it a park. They have made it a park. And they go there and they, 
I saw a lot of children playing, playing on the Holy Mount. And, and I understand they're doing it on purpose because the Jews cannot even go up there to worship their God. They can, they're not allowed to go up there and pray. And yet these Muslim kids, they're all, if you notice, they're in the background, they're all playing. They all have balls and running around and stuff. And I took picture of them, pictures of them. They're all over the place. I, that just struck me as funny. Not as funny as a serious thing. They don't know what they're doing. They're, because God is not there now. He departed, Ichabod. God departed. But if God was there now, this would not be going on. You need to respect the holy place of God. This is what he shows us. He shows us this, but that's not going on right now. That Dome of the Rock is there. That building is there. And so you have all these children walking around, and I took lots of pictures of them. And I, I couldn't help but think, well, they don't know. You know, they don't know. So uh, they're innocent. But to us, it's a picture. That's what made it so obvious. It says, they shouldn't be here. These kids are not, uh, the pastor I was with, I says, this is a scary thing. Look what they're doing. They're here on a holy ground. But it's, it's not holy ground right now because he's not there. So, and the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. That's what he tells us. He, they're going to do that. They're assigned this position, position. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. This is, this is amazing. The Bible stresses this. They're doing everything. But do they? Because when we get into chapter 10, after we finish, we're going to see the rebelliousness of these people. So we're going to stop right there. Does, and, and so the question that it begs is, does my manner of conversation proclaim the holiness of, of God, my God? And that's, that should tell us because he is a holy God. He is holy, and we, our conversation, our manner of conversation should project or proclaim, our name should proclaim who he is. That's our God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you, Lord, for the things you teach us out of the book of Numbers and for the fact that we're just beginning. Uh, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. And we ask you now to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray, for beside you there is another God. Amen. Good, good.